Hello, this is a um, short video uh, presentation <coughs> for the Professional Master's Education elective ED9058. It's also for to be Ed, Major Specialism Science, SG202, and for other B Ed um, modules in science. Um, this uh, presentation is about mini beasts. Um, and the first thing, of course, in dealing with mini beasts is people's prior knowledge. What do they know about mini beasts in their local environment? Okay, we can we can look at, um, for example, cognitive aspects with mini beasts. That's uh, using concept maps and keys, and so on. Um, here's a typical concept map, for example, on woodlouse, and that's using C map tools, which is um, a free. Um, app for um, concept mapping you can get it for any platform um, it's very simple to use okay um, uh, correct kind of type of concept map is obviously one where you know all of the arrows are labeled otherwise it's just a spider diagram uh, you see for example here woodlice plural woodlice um, are not insects uh, woodlice live in dark, damp places. Woodlice are detritivores and are essential to the manufacture of soil. Woodlice are crustaceans, but the only land crustaceans. Of course, um, that's all of the different species. Okay, so here's a, an example then of a key. And a key is a type of conceptual mapping framework. Okay. Uh, we just make this a bit bigger, you know, and it's on the basis of yes, no questions. <clears throat> Whether you're on the seashore or not, so let's say we're not. So are you on the seashore? Down this arrow here, kind of roll into a ball, um, like this. Usually, these these type of woodlice are not so uh, common, but they're also these species are typically not native either okay is there a gap for example it means here it doesn't roll up quite neatly anyway can I roll into a ball and I would say no does it have a clear dark stripe down its back like this yes then it's the common striped woodlouse okay which is Philosia muscarum okay so that's what that one is all right and that gives you the, the name of it. Now, uh, common shiny woodlice, aniscus. Uh, we've also got uh, porcello, scaber, the r common rough woodlice. And then other ones that you will have will be um, the common pill woodlice, armadillidium vulgari. And these are, these have been brought in and you'll see these typically in Leinster at the moment. So um, we've got keys. Of course, you can go one stage back and have woodlice in a key um, with other common soil and animal. Of course, observing observing many beasts, you can observe by eye is a typical one. Um, of course, you've got to get a hold of them. Uh, the easiest thing is, of course, if you've got a, a bug hotel in your school ground, what you can do there is just simply dismantle part of it if it's a if it's a stack of bricks and, and logs and flower pots and so on, and um, you can just dismantle one portion of it and pick up the small creatures, um, preferably with gloves on or using plastic spoons. The reason you wear gloves is not so that you don't get disease. Keep your hands clean. Is that you don't damage the the animals with the salt in your fingers. But uh, once you do um, get them into a plastic tub, okay, and then you can look at them under a microscope. Here's an example of a digital microscope. It was originally made by Intel in the early uh, 2000s, but it's, um, it's under a different ownership, but it's still being manufactured. And it's in terms of uh, the money that it costs, it's in around 30 euro. It's less than 100 anyway. Um, and it's uh, it works reasonably well. There's a, an image, for example, a screenshot of some woodlice being observed under under the microscope. Okay, 
So pros and cons of this one. It combines a microscope with a digital camera, so you get video and imaging. Files can be exported. Um, typically when you've only got one microscope in a classroom, this one will connect to a computer interactive whiteboard. So it's not bad. Of course, um, observational um, uh, practical work. That's a key part of, uh, of uh, biology in the primary school and in second school and in third level. Uh, observation is uh, the, the, the skill, uh, the top skill, I would say, in biology. And because you can only make, you can only go to the second stage, the analyzing, um, drawing conclusions, um, inferring, and so on, model building, and and all of that. If you are first proficient in observing, so without observation, you know you get, you know you can't move much further. And uh, many of the great discoveries uh, in biology were 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 by observation. Okay. Um, you might say, "Oh, there's great, you know, discoveries made in biology, and they were they were by by accident." Regardless of whether it was accident or not, uh, without the observation of the of the event of the phenomenon, they they wouldn't have happened. Okay, so observation is extremely important. Um, if of course investigating then is the the other. Uh, sort of strand of uh, science uh, practical work that we can do and the, the classic experiment that goes back many years is the choice chamber. This is uh, exemplarized in the 1999 curriculum. Okay, if you look at the, the guidelines you'll see simple choice chambers are done there uh, and they recommend that you do this with all classes. Okay, and uh, in the diagram they've got you know two two different chambers and it's about getting the wood lice to choose between them. Okay. And you can see one is in darkness and the other is in light. And um, what I would have typically done is just taken a small dish and made a partition in it, blackened one side along the side and the top. And in one, in two other, one in light, one in dark, um, I would have put um, cotton wool soaked in water okay um, and what do we see okay so we, we we need about we could do one or you know you can do this by group so you for example you could get a group to do this um, and they they produce um, uh, results and then the results are charted or uh, you collate the whole class um, you could do you know several of several of these um, little choice chambers they're, they're just petri dishes so they're very small or you can have a, any large um, any large uh, um, box whatever shoe box is a bit large um, but any smooth sided uh, box that allows light in and that you're able to blacken on one side okay so we could have for example um, a whole class divided up into groups and each group has their own choice chamber. Each uh, group gets given four uh, wood lice, and they have to see where the four go. And then you collate all the results at the end so that you then can graph them. Okay. So here's the results, for example, of four different groups. Your four uh, ch sections in your choice chamber there's the dark and damp, the dark and dry, the light and damp, the light and dry. And uh, you can see here, for example, that three out of the four, it's dark and damp, is the, where most of the wood lice go. In one group, dark and dry, okay? Uh, and then you can see that it's little, or there's only a few in the other ones, individuals and so on, okay? Now, uh, it's, of course, it's, it's normal uh, in a typical, uh, uh, scientific experiment that you you get a you don't get the ideal textbook results. Okay, that's something to talk about. All right, wood lice are living things and they don't always keep the rules and regulations. So here, the wood lice preferred light and wet in a very uh, large number after the dark and wet. Okay, uh, wouldn't say it's a huge uh, a huge difference between the two results here. 
Um, and that's because what is the key critical factor here is damp. Okay. Um, you, there's an error that, that creeps in here, of course, is that if you're using pieces of cotton wool in a Petri dish, the wood lice sometimes go under it and they get lodged in there and they don't go any further. And uh, that's where you get the you get that kind of result from. Okay. Um, of course, we never we should never fiddle the results uh, of our experiments. We should just present them as they are and then try and discuss what happens. Then you've got uh, designing making. Of course, you can make uh, models of mini beasts with uh, with clay. Um, if you use a self-drying clay, you've got to make them quite big in order that they'll support themselves. And then you can try and uh, paint them. And then make up your own um, diorama of uh, habitat of different mini beasts from a particular habitat. Okay. So first stage, of course, is I got a, a template, which is, will be available on loop. You print that off. It's to, onto, onto card, actually, it's preferable, of course. And, um, you know, you're going to need scissors and just Brit glue. It's important to note those instructions. And then you cut out all the pieces. And you'll note that there's only just one little template for the legs. And that's because you're going to use all this uh, waste card to cut out uh, the 14 legs that you're going to need. So you've all the body parts here. You've got the large antennae, you've got the, the cirri, which goes at the other end of the body, and then you start to assemble, okay, and so on. There's the template for the, the leg elements, which you cut out of the waste paper card, and then you've got your completed model. And then, of course, you can display it, and uh, you can bend it into a particular shape and so on, okay? So when you make a model like that, and you're not, I would say, design your own, rather than, you know, when you're just following a template, it's, there's no design element. Somebody else has designed it. Um, of course, and of course you can paint them. And of course, this is your striped uh, wood lice, so you would want to have uh, shades of gray with a black stripe going down it, you know, a darker stripe. Um, of course, you can then go artistic and, and any kind of color you like but then uh, the question here is is what's the scale of the model and you should represent that as a percentage or a fraction design your own model of a different mini beast and then of course there are commercially available plastic kit models for some mini beasts have a go at one of these it would be something you could recommend so that's uh, work uh, on, on wood lice it's it's all fairly it's all fairly doable. They making the making the model. I think younger children would have um, a trick with that. Um, but it is just cut, cutting and pasting. The um, the investigating uh, with the choice chamber. That's um, that's a little bit of a trick. Um, but. Uh, Usually, the with the younger children, it might be conceptually what's the difference between the four sections and arranging them correctly, uh, and then displaying the results and inferring from that uh, what is the preference in very commons of the of the wood lice. Um, but uh, this work would be um, designed across a range of different age groups, rather than just be focused on one. And you can, of course, you can. Uh, simplify things um, such as the, your concept maps and so on depending on um, the age of the children okay so that's it and good luck with that thank you